You're listening to the When Life Hands You Lennon's podcast. But in an entry-level film production, it's one strike and you're out. You're fired. I'm not calling you back. If your goal today is to make a basket, we're going to make that basket. The minute you create something, as soon as it's made tangible, you have a copyright in it. How do I get our guys to sound that big, you know, that full when they do the harmonies? And I'm your host, Lennon Seahawk. Let's get to the show. What is going on? My name is Lennon Seahawk. I am the host of the When Life Hands You Lennon's podcast. Now, I have an incredibly special guest for this week, and I am beyond humbled and honored to have spoken with them. This week's guest features the lead singer of Cascada, Natalie Horler. Now, She needs no introduction because many of you may know her or probably know her from her smash hits, Every Time We Touch and Evacuate the Dance Floor, among many others, What Do You Want From Me, What Hurts The Most, Perfect Day, and a whole range of others. Now, a little bit of a story behind this. Cascada is the reason I am in dance music. Cascada is the reason I love the dance music genre. The album Every Time We Touch changed my entire life and career. I have so many incredible memories with friends dancing to Every Time We Touch at school dances, at proms, at weddings, at you name it. And I mean, even to to this day, when it comes on in a grocery store or the mall or wherever I'm at, I still stop and acknowledge it because it is such a song that has such so many memories attached to it. So this conversation with Natalie is and will be my most cherished moment in my career, one of my most cherished moments in my career. Natalie is a pure joy. She is so lovely. She is so much fun. You will see her bubbling personality and free spirit just flowing throughout this entire conversation. We share laughs. She talks about how she got into the studio, how she got into music. She talks about uh, her new music coming out. She talks about everything and even her personal hobbies, like what she enjoys doing outside of music and and, uh, even what the future of dance music, hard dance music, looks like. Before we dive into the conversation, I want to remind you to please sign up to my mailing list that helps me notify you when new episodes like this amazing conversation are live. I would appreciate you if you check out my website, lennonseahawk.com, L-E-N-N-O-N-C-I-H-A-K.com. You can sign up to my email list there as well. I would also appreciate a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps the show get discovered by new listeners so I can have on amazing guests like this one continually for the show. I would also appreciate a follow on Instagram. You can follow me at Lennon Seahawk, L-E-N-N-O-N-C-I-H-A-K. And if you or somebody you know would be a great guest for this show, I'm always looking for music professionals to be on the show and have amazing, insightful conversations. There's a guest request form in the show notes below. Fill that out and we can set something up. So without me rambling any further and continuing to push down my excitement, let's dive headfirst into this amazingly inspiring and motivating and fun and delightful conversation with the incredibly talented Cascada. You've got an amazing manager. He's a great guy. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Why? Thank you very much. (laughs) Just just testing if you're listening. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's so, why he wanted well, to listen. Yeah, there you go. So you got some brownie points, Frank. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, he's been great. Uh, I've been working with him since January to try to set this up, but he's been absolutely great. Uh, so oh, good. I, I appreciate him setting this up. It's all behind up. the scenes stuff. I don't really get, I don't hear yeah. about all that. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time coming. But uh, first of all, uh, I want to just get off my chest because I am a big fan of Cascada. Uh, probably for the last 15 years, uh, you, you are the reason I am in dance music. The reason I love dance music and, uh, every time we touch changed my life. 
uh, that oh, whole album. Wow. So thank you so I just much. Wanted, that means the world. You're welcome. I just wanted to say thank you for giving us that amazing piece of art and uh, everything you've given to me uh, as a fellow listener and fan. So uh, this is thank truly, you. I really appreciate that. That truly really means a lot. Thank you. This, yeah, this is truly an honor. Truly an honor. Thank you. Um, so yeah, let's just dive in and, and get started. Uh, Frank said you've got like 30 minutes, so we'll try to keep it around 30 minutes. I want to be respectful of your time. Um, okay, I'm all, I'm all right. <laughs> okay. As I was diving in and doing some research on you, uh, I, you Here mentioned you that you did a lot of <laughs> uh, studio work. You did a lot of studio work for DJs. And I'm curious to hear just a little bit more about what kind of studio work it was when you had first started. Was I it mean, vocal we're... or producing? Yeah. Well, we're talking me being 17 and deathly scared of singing in front of people. (laughs) I mean, I was singing since I was little and I always wanted to be a singer and I had a really big gob, a big mouth about, you know, I'm going to be famous. But at the same time, (laughs) I used to tell my teachers that, no joke. But um, no, at the same time, I was so nervous when I had to sing in front of people I remember the first time I ever was was invited to these producers to they had this sort of home studio and I was invited around, you know, when they write a song and they need a vocalist to sort of put something down and sort of get cash in hand and you go home again, you know, got nothing to do with it. Um, they, I, I literally, and this is no, this is all seriousness, I made them turn and face the wall. They were not <laughs> allowed to look at me when I sang. I swear on my life, it, that is the, the honest truth. I was that nervous and that inexperienced. I was so young, you know, I was just, uh, but the thing is, the, thank goodness they actually were cool with that because they really loved what I did. They were actually quite sort of flabbergasted, really, that they obviously thought I was good. And I was this young 17-year-old and I, I did a good job. I remember singing... Um, my love is your love from Whitney Houston. Mm-hmm. They just put the track on, and I sort of I just <laughs> made them turn around and just sang in the mic a little bit and stuff, and they thought it was good. So, and do you do you it's still funny do that? About that? I haven't thought about that in years. That's so funny. Good well, question. I'm glad you I'm glad you got to think about it. Uh, <laughs> do you still do that in the studio? Do you make Jan and and Manian turn sometimes. around? <laughs> <All the sometimes. laughs> so you're pretty comfortable sitting, singing in front of them then. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but seriously, like I don't, I don't actually enjoy being in a room with someone sitting right in front of me and just say, you know, start singing. That's not mm. like that's not me. It's different when you've got a mic and you're on stage and you're about to do a performance. Sure. Um, sure. But if someone, if say I'm sitting in a room with four or five friends and they say, "Oh, come on, give us a song, like sing something." That will actually make my heart sink. I will just be, re- I'll be really nervous that it's not something that comes easy to me. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some people that are vocalists, they just sing all day long, don't they? Or they just start going, sure. ah, you know, like all this. And it's just like, no, that is not me. Even yeah. if I can do all that, it's not me at all. It just it makes me nervous. Well, now I have to cross off one of my questions. <laughs> really? No, <laughs> Did no. you want me to think that, me? <laughs> We'll get to, we'll cross that bridge when we get there and we'll see how comfortable you are. Just put some whiskey in this. <laughs> <laughs> so the Cascada band and brand has really evolved over the years. You went from like, you look at every time we touch to, uh, you know, perfect day, that type of stuff, like 2009 evacuate the dance floor has really changed to now what the music you're putting out now. Can you talk a little bit about that change and why you've shifted from kind of that hard dance to more maybe commercial pop or house or why that is? Yeah, I mean, we do try and go back and forth a little bit because you do want to sort of give the fans what they like, you know, but it is a very difficult line to to find that balance because you want to be you want to go with the times as well like I'm still very very lucky to work as much as I do and it's obviously it is it is based on the old music that I've released within the past of course but saying that we're still we're still current to a certain extent even though we're not sort of current current in the charts everywhere but we do still put out music so you do try and 
somehow keep up with the times at the same time. So that's sort of a little bit to do with it. Obviously, what you were talking about with, say, every time we touch the shift to, say, evacuate and that sort of thing, of course, that was a very big sort of commercial decision. Mm -hmm. But those decisions come about when you're, you're developing and, you know, and you're talking with your label and and thinking what would make sense for us to do, you know. So thankfully, I'm actually quite pleased with the type of balance we have now because, mm-hmm. say, when I do a show, it's, it's an absolute mixture of that, you know. Yeah. Well, there'll be something that's sort of a little bit more up to date that people will go a little bit crazy off because it's a bit more... EDM style, let's say, and then we'll have the old, the old hands up stuff that people love, and then we've got the more the commercial stuff, which is evacuate that um, even the young kids today still listen to. So mm. I think I think we've I think we're okay for now, but yeah, it's definitely always a challenge when you're making new music because you do want to sort of please everyone, which never works. <laughs> yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> do you, and do you? Do you have a preference as to which style that you like, or do you find yourself more creative in one or the other? I definitely have more of a tendency to the more commercial things, just because I feel it gives me more. I always see it out of position of a vocalist, you know. I mean, I love a great EDM track where there's very minimal vocal, but at the end of the day, I'm a singer. So obviously, I do love to sort of get out there that's why I've always loved doing acoustic stuff or on the album or say Christmas album where I get to do some ballads and really show what I can do so to speak so I'm always going to have that tendency but saying that you get me on stage singing the old stuff the every time we touch or truly madly or miracle I'm loving that and I I do I do change it up into my own sort of thing a little bit as well because I'm I'm a live vocalist you know but um, yeah, so it's sort of a mixture out of both, I'd say. Okay. And by the way, I want to make a, a point. I think we should get rid of uh, Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You every year, and we should just <laughs> replace it with your Christmas album. <laughs> my, little, my little thing I did. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that album. I listen to it every Christmas, uh, <laughs> and I, I think we should replace it. I'm going to propose that to, to oh, whoever okay. I need to propose it to. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll sign. I'll sign that. (laughs) Okay. I'll get it sent over when it's ready. Um, so what's the creation process like when you're writing these types of music? Are you in the studio with, uh, your, with Jan and Manian? Are you writing stuff on your own? Like, how does that kind of work? Well, I must say I haven't written much when it comes to Cascada. Cascada is very much sort of Yanu and his songwriting buddies babies really um I do write but I do stuff for myself really Mm, and it normally is a different direction of music to be fair like I do come from a jazz background and very much R&B and soul and there are some producers that I'm actually talking to right now and have done a few songwriting zoom sessions with because obviously we can't see each other physically and um, so I'm getting into that sort of thing as well. But um, when it comes down to Cascada stuff, that's more that's more Yanu and his mates who have done most of those songs. Okay. And then he just has you come on and you just do the vocals? Yeah, I mean, obviously I have to, I interpret it all my way and things like sure. that, you know. But, um, but yeah, no, I've never been much involved in that process when it comes to that, really. He's, uh, he sort of has his own little world when it comes to that. Wow. Interesting. I didn't know that. Um, so yeah, you, you've become kind of the face of Cascada. Like how, how does that feel? How does that, like a lot of my friends and people who are into Cascada don't even know that it's three people. It's Yeah, that's and- true. I mean, I've always sort of said it was a band and it, I, that's because we, us three are sort of the main people who are involved in making our music. But when it comes to say live shows and being on tour, then that literally is just me on stage with my crew, which is Frank, my manager, and our dancers who who actually support me enormously in our performance, you know, but vocally it's just me and, do, and just performance while it's just me on stage. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So how is the creation? How have you been working during uh, the pandemic? Uh, has, first of all, has your family been safe and friends all good? Yeah, we've been fine. Thank you. I mean, I had it, the bloody virus. Oh. And uh, so we were sort of in a quite of a quarantine situation at the beginning of last year. We had it quite early on. Um, but we're fine. You know, we got over it and uh, we're all we're all happy 
healthy again. That's good. Um, yeah, family's good. It's been it's been quite a challenge on a creative level, to be honest. Like, I, I know everyone sort of ventured out at the beginning of the pandemic and like, what can we do that's possible while we're all stuck at home and everyone was doing these streams and online shows or loads of, you know, this sort of thing, you know. And I did a bit of that too, and, it, and it's totally enjoyable and it's cool, but I don't know, I, I find it very difficult to do stuff from a distance like that when it comes to creativity, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I did do some recordings with Jan and Manu. They live quite close by. I mean, Jan lives in Spain now, but um, like I can go around to the studio with Manian pretty much any time I want, so that was easy going. But the whole thing to actually to keep a distance of people, what you were meant to do, that's also something that made you not see people you know and so everyone was quite isolated for a long time it's sort of getting a bit easier now but all in all you, you sort of kept kept away from everyone so yeah. I find it find it quite a challenge to to do anything particularly creative at home I've only these past few months started doing more and I don't know if it's to do with just fancying it or whether it's to do with the fact that a bit of hopefulness is coming coming up now that this is hopefully coming to an end you know mm -hmm. I've been quite yeah. in awe of people who have been so busy online yeah. and doing stuff but yeah. it's not for me getting a camera and sitting against a wall and just singing I just don't know it's just not got my cup of tea yeah yeah and, and you seem like such a bubbly person such a such an extrovert and wanting to that social <laughs> yeah. interaction and it's just like sitting in front of a computer for 12, 15 hours a day is just not my thing either. Uh, no, I miss going no. out and meeting people as well. Yeah. Um, I miss so, the audience, you know. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Uh, especially when I getting do a performance, I need the live audience. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of artists that I've spoken to have said that the, they need that energy to feed off yep. of when they're performing. And just like performing on Zoom and just stuff is just not even no, remotely it close. Just, it's not the same. It's, it's, it's like a... You know, there's there's people watching behind the screen, but all in all, you're just on your own. So it is a bit, it's a bit strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I that's... don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Uh, I think at first, when every, when everything kind of shut down, everybody was excited, like music was transitioning uh, over to the live space or to the you know remote stuff. But then people got burned out really quickly because then everybody and their mother was performing online. Yeah, you know, just like. Okay, I've sat in front of a computer all day, and then I have to go sit in front of a computer and watch an artist perform. But I want to watch my TV show, and I know. Like you know when you go on your Instagram and you just see so and so has gone live. So I hardly ever click on that. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I'll pop in, but I just get scared because my name pops in there, and I'm like, oh, I don't want you to see me. I'm here. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. That's a good point, actually. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They point out, and they're like, uh, then it. And then they call you out and yeah, no, I'm not about that. Join the video. Join the video. Request uh, to join. No, thanks. Instagram. No, thanks. No, thanks. No, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I, also, I, I see that you've, uh, you've recently joined TikTok. Uh, why did you join yes. TikTok? What's, what's up with that? Let's, I've let's been hear a bit that. lazy these past few weeks. I actually haven't been posting. <laughs> I see that. You, I haven't seen many Cascada videos. No, I actually need to get back into it because I did go through a phase where I was sort of getting into it more. No, it just came to be fair. I mean, I've been doing this for a while now and these are social media things. I've been, I try and get, I try and keep up with a bit of it, but some of it is just too much, you know, like yeah. I don't really tweet much anymore and stuff. I'm just like Instagram's fine. And TikTok is, is definitely a lot of fun, but well, you know, you might know that I'm a mum as well. And this yep. lockdown situation, I have a five year old at home and mm -hmm. this is the third lockdown where she's been home from school. It's really hard to have that free time to actually go and put time and effort into these things. It's not something you can just do uh, in five minutes, really. So that's pretty much the reason that if I don't have time, then I can't really keep up with it, you know, so mm -hmm. sort of to do with that, but things yeah. are looking up. <laughs> yeah. I figured it's like, okay, she's, she's got a family. She's probably busy. Uh, yeah. but everybody things come up and you just got to deal with them as you can. Yeah. Uh, I think but, I'm, a, I do think I keep up with, um, with social media enough that, that the fans yes. don't feel I've gone, you know, like I try and 
most days post something or other and keep and do a story or tell them what I'm doing today and stuff like that. So, and I enjoy that, you know, I think it's mm-hmm. nice. And we've, we've had some new stuff happen now with a new website and some new, new photo shoot pictures and stuff. So that's really nice for me to actually let people in on that and show them that, you know, but, um, but without being able to go on stage and traveling, um, it's really hard to, to post about stuff. You know, I'm not the type of person who p- posts their lunch, you know, or, oh, I'm just going to go and have a shower, you know, like, I'm just not, <laughs> sorry, I'm not, that's just not me. Yeah. I just think like, yeah, because to be fair, I know there's probably fans out there who would like, enjoy that. But saying that at the end of the day, I do see myself as a completely normal person. Yes. <laughs> who, you know, I do the laundry and I do, I make my food and I I live a completely same life as everyone else out there. So I don't feel it's necessary to sh- post things about it because it's just the same as someone else's. I probably underestimate it a little bit because of being in the public eye. But as you can tell, I really don't see myself as being a celebrity all day long, even though I'm a singer, you know. I can imagine that gets tiring, like having to hold up to those. Like, is there like a different level of being a normal person, quote unquote, and then being a quote unquote celebrity? Like, is there different things you have to do, like scenarios, situations? Well, not, not for me, no, not because I've never been that type to sort of lead two different lives. Like when I go on when I go on tour, then I know I'm in that capacity and I'm you know, when I get to a when I get to a venue, then I know that, that people see me as the celebrity, the, the artist, the, the mm-hmm. you know, cascada and all this. But I've never I never pretend to be something I'm not. I'm always what you see is what you get. I'm always this way because this is me and my friends know me as this, too. There's no difference in any way. And, um, you know, when I go out shopping here to the grocery store then I'm just me as well you know like I don't walk around with big fat black sunglasses and just go oh yeah I'm feeling really special today I'm feeling myself picking up this milk and you know like I'm just just not that's not me at all you know I don't identify with that whole life really even though it's a part of my job so there's no difference we're all in one yeah I think that's the fun that's why I've had such a great time chatting with you and uh the the personality that you have is just genuine. It carries across many platforms. And I can tell that you are who you are and you have this fun personality. You. I can tell <laughs> you are just so much fun to be around. So uh Hi. yeah, it's that's that's great. Um you wait till you have a drink with me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a dream. If I could have a drink with you, please. If we ever meet up on tour, if you're ever on tour, I will make a very conceited effort to help you, you in go. any way that I can and support you. We'll, and we'll have a few, we'll have a few shots. Yes, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do that. Um, so moving on to the next question, uh, pioneer, you're kind of a pioneer in the hands up dance genre. Like every time somebody thinks of the hands up dance genre, they think of Cascada, they think of Empire One, they think of Mania, and they think of all these big artists. So it's really changed over the years. Uh, where do you think it's going? Because it's really kind of making a comeback. Do you see? I it agree. Kind of, it's Sorry. really I'm seeing it in the festival scene, like the hard dance. Uh, but I'm I'm curious to see where it's going to go because it's making more of a mainstream appearance. I mean, for 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 us, that's fantastic that it's sort yes. of coming back, you know. And I'm always astounded as to who listens to our music still, even the the real old stuff, you know, but all, but in general, I, I, at the moment, I wouldn't, wouldn't ever think of retiring yet, you know, like I'm, I'm really in it and I can't wait for the future and to carry on touring and making new music and seeing what's going to come about. And hopefully there'll be some exciting collaborations on the rise as well, you know, with current artists and things. So, um, yeah, I don't know where it's going to go, but the fact that it's sort of moving into our modern time again, I find that ex- extremely exciting and I'm I'm all for it and I will definitely want to be along for the ride even though I'm from the old the old times. <laughs> old times was like, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Well, 15. I actually That's... don't feel that old even though sometimes some young kids will come up and they say, "Oh, I used to listen to you when I was in primary school." And I'm just like, "Oh god." where's your mom <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i i mean that's because uh every time we touch came out in 2006 right yes yes so i was 
10 at that time. There you go. There you so, go. You're a young, you're a young boy. I would probably be that person be like, where's your mom? Uh, <laughs> I'm a big boy. That's um, right. So, oh, <laughs> so I couldn't help myself. You, you just laid it down there that you just I I did. Had to go. I did. I did. Um, so you also mentioned that like the way I do is your favorite track. Uh, is that still true? And, and it's why certainly it? one of them. It's certainly okay. one of them. Um, I just, I just love the melody. I love it. And um, my problem in general is always, um, this is sort of like an even, even an insider thing with our crew. And I would never be able to take a full written album and choose the song that's going to make it to number one. <laughs> like I would not. I would probably choose the wrong one that wouldn't be the chart. Uh, success or the popular mainstream track like that has always been my trouble really I don't know whether that's generally an artist's disadvantage because we we think of other things and I'm as I said I can't say that everyone's the same but for me I definitely pay attention to just different types of things. You know, I don't listen to, oh, this beat is right on the money right now. This is going to be so big in 2000. Blah. You know, I just, I don't know anything about that, really. I just say, oh, I love this. You know, I love putting that vocal on there. And I really love that ad lib and the melody just gives me chills. And that's the sort of thing I think about, really. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's just, it's definitely one of my favorite songs that we've, we've brought out. Yeah. Mm, interesting. And are there uh, any other songs? Like, did you feel that way when you when you've released previous stuff? That, you, like, what songs did you pick to be successful that actually became like "Evacuate the Dance Floor"? Did you expect yeah. that one to be as big as it was? I did actually. I was oh, you did. actually that was. A- <laughs> I was lucky I was on the money with that one as well now that that was funny that because I don't know you probably know about the the typical way about getting together with your label and sort of doing an album listening and stuff and our our lads from all around the world they flew over to uh, Cologne and we did a big album listening all together it was lovely you know with all everyone and we sat down and you know you've 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 worked so long on this album with all these tracks and you're just thinking we're so proud of this what are they going to think and I remember they were very they loved San Francisco as well and um, I can't remember what, what else they mentioned. It's a while ago now, obviously. But but Evacuate was definitely the one that stuck out. And I remember putting with before it was anywhere release or whatever, I remember putting it on in my car and playing it to some of my mates. And, you know, like the bam, bam, you know, and it was just, I remember thinking, I'm loving this song. I'm, I love this so much this has to be successful. And thankfully everyone felt the same. And so it was um, picked as the first release of that album. And uh, it was, it was quite a big success. Yeah, it was. Uh, So when when you're performing, do you have a favorite one to perform or is it similar to the ones that you release? Um, Also there is sort of a mixture of emotions about that because I always love performing every time we touch, even though one could think, oh God, how many times have I sung that? And there are artists that go that go long way down the line and they ended up they they kick out their most famous songs out of their set, which is terrible for the fans because they're they're gonna be disappointed. I would never do that. I'd never make that decision. And you know, it still sends chills down my spine when the whole audience sings along you know, because I always do a little bit of an acapella beforehand and have everyone sing along and stuff like that. So I'll always love that. But when it comes to, say, vocal performance, like something like What Hurts the Most will be one of my favourites to perform because for me it sort of gives me the opportunity to bang out some good vocal, you know, if I'm having a good day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) You never know. Yeah. You never know. Everybody has those days for sure. Uh, yep. And you never know what's going to hurt the most. So <laughs> that's right. There you that's go. True. The that's true. That's <laughs> true. Uh, so you have a new song coming out. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about that? I can talk a little bit about it. <laughs> what you can, of course. I know there's yeah, some limitations. Called, it's called One Last Dance. Okay. And it's a collaboration with Trance X. 
Okay. You might remember. And um, yeah, it's like a mixture from that 80s feel of the track, of the original, but we've definitely changed it up. Like the lyrics are different. And uh, but you'll recognize that that sample, and we've definitely put our flavor into it of today and a little bit of sort of old school Cascada style. So I'm definitely hoping the fans will enjoy this one. And um, yeah, beginning of June. So it's literally coming out in a few weeks' time. So I'm actually quite excited. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, Frank mentioned that when I was working with him that you've got to do a song coming out. So I want to talk yeah. to you about it. Um, yeah. Are you able to sing a little bit of it for us? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> if you don't feel comfortable, that's totally fine. Okay, I'll pass on that one then. <laughs> okay, cool. But I'll tell cool. you what, you won't have long to wait though, because it really sure. is coming out really soon. And um, yeah, I'm excited to hear. It's, it's, I love when we release new music because you get quite a, a big ball of reaction first, especially from the fans who find out about it, you know. So they, they give you all their opinions on it. And obviously, I don't like the negative opinions, but I like the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> so how do, how do you deal with the negative opinions? Do you just ignore them? Do you respond to them? I do not respond to them. I mean, everyone is allowed to have their opinion. And when it comes to something like music, who are you to say what's bad or good? You know, it's it's about what you enjoy. So uh, it's always going to be a matter of opinion. So I would never I would never do that. I mean, I think there's certain lines you can cross in the way you express it. Um, but that's still not something someone said, oh, that track's shit. I'm not I'll be the last person. Oh, sorry, am I allowed to say that? Yeah. But that track's beep, then um you know, that I wouldn't say, you know, what do you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. that's silly, you know. But um, I think the fans, we have an extremely loyal fan base. Like, it's, yeah, I feel very, very thankful for that because through this whole pandemic, they're always sort of there. I mean, it's only online, of course, but I do, I do feel it that they are always present and they're always showing us their love, that they're literally just waiting to, to get going again and to come to the next shows and stuff like that. So I also know that they love new music and they will enjoy it, a, any song I release. So that is a really nice warm blanket for me. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. Um, so do you find that you're getting new fans or do you have a lot of old fans who've kind of stuck with you? Having a clue. No clue. No, I don't know. It's, I can't tell the difference, really. I mean, certain fans I know because of them coming to the shows all the time. We have sure. this little, these, these you know, fan base that they really are hardcore fans, so to speak, as one says. But any new fans, it's very hard for me to know whether these are people who have stuck with you or people who are used to listen to you maybe and have rediscovered you because they didn't think you'd still be on the road or you know I get sometimes you get messages like oh my god you're on Instagram <laughs> you know like <laughs> yes yes <laughs> but um but yeah no it's hard to tell so don't really know interesting interesting so speaking of being on the road you plan like once things are safe and open Do you plan to go back on tour? Uh, Have you ever been to the U.S.? Like any plans to tour the U.S.? I don't, I would love to get out to a Cascada show. U.S.? Oh my God. We used to travel to the States all the time. Oh, this was probably when I was, I've been a needy beady boy then. This was when you were really little. (laughs) So that's why. Around the time of every time we touch um, those few years, we were in the States all the time. I mean, we used Mm. to, we used to travel everywhere. We were in New York about 25 times, I think. And we used to, I oh, played Webster Hall. I played all the big um, radio shows in New Jersey. And I oh, did did the lot. It was fantastic. Did Chicago so many times. No, it's been, it's been amazing. So we actually want to start touring the States again. And we're looking into hopefully being able to do that and make that happen, say, next year. Fingers Which I would crossed. be really psyched to do. Yeah, I really want to. So that'd be cool. No, but in general, the way it's worked in this pandemic, at least for us, um, the out. I think when the pandemic hit the beginning of last year, I think we had about two thirds of our calendar booked up already, and then near, pretty much everything was cancelled. So things have just been pushed up, really. So 
even though there was a lot that you can't push up, it was just cancelled because that just happened at that time of year and you can't place it somewhere else. In general, we have so many gigs in the calendar that's just being moved the, the better the pandemic gets. And as soon as we get to that point where, okay, by June, July, say in the UK, um, things will have opened up that we're allowed to go back on stage, then we will do those gigs. So that's mm-hmm. that's sort of the explanation I'm trying to give that we're just literally waiting. To, we're rearing to go. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm fingers crossed that you're coming to the U S I've actually have a, a best friend in, in Sweden, Stockholm. And I'm right. like, if I go out there, I'm going to make a trip to see Cascada perform. Live. <laughs> so, yes, we do travel to Scandinavia quite a bit and do yeah. quite a few shows there, which is what we want to hope to do soon as well. That's why, even though it's for everyone else, it's always important what's happening in your own country with the pandemic. For us, we're literally looking everywhere and seeing where there are possibilities, you know, for us mm-hmm. to, to get back to work because uh, we really are itching to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I know everybody's itching. So I, but we, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know if you can see it as well. Like we're so yeah, I mean, close. In the States, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? I mean, we're just waiting for a bloody restaurant to open over here. Really? But, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we, are you in, lockdown. you're in Germany? Yes. Germany. Okay. And we're, wow. we're, we're locked down still and have been since November. So we're still trying to, but things are looking up now slowly the vaccines are rolling out more and and um hopefully things will start opening up soon we can go to the hairdresser again (laughs) (laughs) that's that's good got to keep your hair got to keep your hair up yeah it's something uh (laughs) yeah i'm in california so we've been pretty locked down but now things like we're going to be fully open on june 15th uh obviously requiring the mask because i think we have over 50 percent of the population vaccinated so that's fantastic uh, yeah it's it's getting there there's obviously going to be certain precautions in place and safety measures but yeah fully open on june 15th is what the governor had said which is exciting that's Uh, exciting that's really exciting music will be back and and all that stuff Uh, i think everyone's really rearing to go go to the next party and get to a club or go to an open air festival i think everyone is just they really want to get out there again, don't they? I mean, I feel mm-hmm. like that on a personal level as well as on a work, you know, side of things, you know. I can imagine mm-hmm. that people just really want to go and let loose again. We've all been so isolated and it's been yeah. very lonely. It has been very lonely. And I moved out to Los Angeles. I live in LA. And um, I moved out here to in July of 2019 for the job that I work at now. And then like a few months later, the pandemic shut down everything. Right. So it's like, I didn't get to experience the LA nightlife or go to the clubs or anything. No. So I haven't really got to experience LA in all of its beauty, no. uh, unfortunately. So yeah, I'm definitely itching to get back uh, I can imagine. and back into things. Um, so kind of last couple of questions here is what kind of music do you typically listen to? Like outside of dance music, like what do you listen to? Oh, it's very, very uh, varied, to be honest. Like I'll listen to old school hip hop like I'll listen to an old Dre track but at the same time I love Billie Eilish um sometimes I'll listen to some jazz stuff or like singers unlimited like vocal harmony groups from from years ago you know so it's very very it varies loads I also love house music as well right really yeah really good stuff as well like the Tomorrowland stuff and all that I love that too so yeah it depends on my mood to be honest I'm I'm not just like I'll listen to that what's that favorite rock track I love so much um the song uh what's the group called something arms go on help me out you don't know do you EDM and all that you haven't a clue (laughs) they're a rock group yeah you oh I've got to find it Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to look for it now. Otherwise, it'll bother you the rest of the day. It will bother me. Yeah. Wait a minute. So bear with me. I will find it. Sure. Welshly Arms. Oh, yes. Legendary. Yeah. If you put that on in the car for me, I will just, I'll bang that up so loud and listen to that electric guitar and I will just, that's, it'll be my mood, you know, I love that too, so. Yeah. Yeah. All sorts. Interesting. So I know that you you also are into fashion, 
it's kind of like you mentioned that that would be the thing you would be doing if you weren't doing music. Yeah. So I'm curious, like, have you, do you watch RuPaul's Drag Race at all? Or are you a fan of I it? Do. <laughs> oh my gosh. My partner got me hooked on it. So <laughs> I love it. So who is your favorite drag queen? Well, I've actually had, I've actually been quite lucky to be on, be in a bit of a contact with some of them on Instagram. So I oh, talked wow. to Aquaria. Okay. We text sometimes we were going to do something online. Um, then McMichael, what's his name? I can't think of his first name now. Oh, I forget all the names actually. McMichaels? Yeah, wait a minute. See, I'm going to get uh, back on now. <laughs> I know who you're talking about too. I just can't think of his name. Yeah, I'll find him. Wait a minute. Oh, I've turned off. See, I've turned off my phone, so I'm not bothered. I can't go in the internet now. Never mind. No, anyway, so I don't, I must, I can't say I have loads of favorites. What's, but there are a few that are particularly special, like especially the ones that do, that are really strong in the in the the performances when they have to knock one or the other out, the sing offs, you know. The um, uh, Morgan McMichaels is the drag queen. That's it. Yeah. So I've been chatting with him a few times as well. He's a really really nice person as well. Um, and the one winner who who ended up having all those rose petals come out on his last performance, who's really artistic, who has a bold uh, head. Uh, starts with an S. Uh, yes, I know who you're talking about. Sasha Valour. Yes, I think he's amazing as well, or she, whatever you want to say. She, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely amazing. And, um, oh, um, Ivy, the weird one. Yeah, Ivy. Weird in a good way. Weird in a good way. Yes. Yeah. I can't think of the um, last one. There's so many of them, like you said. I yes, there's so many. And I and I, you know, I love watching the show. And I always get a certain people text me and say, you should be on the panel and stuff. And they I should agree. perform a song of mine and stuff. I mean, I personally think that would be fabulous. I would be there in an instant, you know. Yeah. But um, we'll see what the future holds. That would be fantastic. I'd love that. Yeah. Yeah, that you would might be... have to send. You might have to send RuPaul this video. I will. Sort of get me I'll, on there. I've got him on speed dial. I'll send it to you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can put in the good word. I think that would be a good one. Um, but who's... Do you, do you have a, a favorite or anybody that you would love to design for? No, nothing like that. I mean, I'm I'm... That's why I love the drag queens as well, not only for their fabulous personalities and their being so extroverted. I love that so much. Um, and I'm very, very open to everything in life. Like I don't have any judgmental qualms. You know, I'm very, very, um, how can you say, like I'm just tolerant of everyone, you know, so I'm, and that's why I love it so much. Um, but when it comes to that's that's why I love all the fashion as well because it's just so out there, you know. But yeah. when it comes to fashion, I'd say it's similar to um, when it comes to music. I know what I like, but that doesn't mean it would necessarily be something other people like. But saying that, like this this newest shoot that I just did, I actually do do my own styling for the clothes and the look, and even even the props. I bring them along. So that's the sort of thing that I really enjoy doing. So I try and incorporate that into my job as well, you know. So I would love to, you know, have maybe a line one day or something like that. But that's all That's all in, in the future. We'll have to see. Yeah, I certainly we'll want to. to get more involved in our merchandising shop because, um, you know, that's also a, a good way for me to be able to uh, get some input into that, you know. Yeah, I saw that you have new merch coming. You posted, I think, on Instagram. It's coming. Right? Yes, it's a, we're we're a bit slow, <laughs> but it's coming. <laughs> yeah, great, great. I'll be getting a T-shirt. Uh, no. <laughs> so, um, so, last question: What do you have any upcoming artists that you're listening to that you think have a lot of potential, or that you can put on and then you just jam to? Cool dear, what a question. No, I couldn't say right now, to be honest. But I tell you what, I'm one of those people that have the radio running all day long and I'll I'll hear stuff, but I won't necessarily know the title or the, who, who that person is. 
but I'll end up being able to sing the whole song by the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? I'm a bit like that. So, okay. yeah, if you ask Frank, he'll laugh his head off. He'll just say, she don't know anyone. <laughs> <laughs> he said, are you supposed to be in the music industry? Yeah, but. <laughs> I know the lyrics. I don't know who did it, though. I know, I know. I'm a little bit like that. I'm sort of like, if I hear someone and it touches me and I'm impressed, then then I'll get into it more. But I haven't got any names for you right now. That's a bit of a difficult question. I would have had to have prepared for that. Which sure, I sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious because sometimes a lot of artists are listening to a lot of like the underground stuff and they're yeah. trying to be hip to that. So I'm always curious to see like, what is everybody listening to that's up and coming? Not, I mean, yeah. Ariana Grande and all these Justin Bieber, they've had enough success. It's time to show. Oh like, yeah, showcase that's true. Some, some uh some underground artists that are trying to make it. I mean years years ago I was listening to Justin Nazuka and he was mm. um someone who wasn't that huge back then and so I used to plug him quite a bit um you know just to just to get more attention on him you know but um no I can't think of anyone right this second no okay interesting good uh well that's all the questions that I have for you uh okay, this, has cool. been, this has been so great <laughs> uh, I thank you so much for your time. Again, I've been such a big fan for many years. My so pleasure. Is true, thank you. Really an honor. No, and hopefully I'll get to, hopefully I'll get to see you on tour and then meet you actually in person instead of I'm over, sure. Over you keep in touch with Frank and we'll make it happen. We we really uh, want to get back to the States. I can't wait. 